The Missing Corpse Morgue Technician I'm a morgue technician. Guess where I spend most of my time? You guessed it. A rather small morgue hidden in the basement of the local hospital. The morgue is cold both in temperature and in appearance. It houses two medical tables to work on the bodies, pale green walls, and a cold gray concrete floor. The smell isn't anything to write home about either. Kind of a combination of raw meat and bleach. But I was used to it. I was in the process of sanitizing the dead body when the medical examiner, Dr. Dixon, called. He instructed me not to touch the body. He stated that he was on his way over to take care of everything himself. It was odd, but I didn't care. It was less work for me. I began tidying up my workspace when Dr. Webster entered the room. Dr. Webster liked to come to the morgue and flirt with me. He was married and 20 years my senior, but the flirtation was harmless, so I didn't mind. Usually, Dr. Webster was bright and cheery. He'd often open the conversation with a corny joke before complimenting my smile, or my eyes, or my hair, or something. But on this day, he quickly said, Hi, Tina, and then hurried through the morgue to the adjoining bathroom washing area. I could hear the water running in the room in addition to his hacking and persistent cough. When he finally emerged from the room, he looked exhausted. He had dark circles under his eyes and his skin was grayish. His bloodshot eyes were tired and I could hear significant wheezing with every breath he took. Still, he attempted to flirt. Well, don't you look lovely today? I wish I could say the same for you. You look horrible. Oh, well, that's not nice. He staggered forward and began having a coughing attack. He steadied himself on the medical table that currently housed the dead body and began coughing profusely. Streams of greenish-red phlegm flew from Dr. Webster's mouth and splattered all over the corpse's face. When he finally got control of his hacking, he looked up at me apologetically. Uh, sorry about that. I shrugged. Eh, you're not going to make that guy any sicker. Dr. Webster managed to flash a grin. He loved my morbid sense of humor. That's when I noticed the bloody gauze he had wrapped around his hand. What happened to you? He waved me off. Clearly, he wasn't up for discussion. I, I, I need to get home. He stumbled toward the morgue door, but had to stop, lean up against the wall and catch his breath before proceeding. You idiot. You are in a hospital. All of your colleagues are doctors. Now go upstairs and have one of them check you out, you stubborn ass. He nodded. Okay, I, I will. I helped Dr. Webster down the corridor and into the elevator. The moment the elevator door shut behind him, I heard the stomping footsteps of somebody running. I turned my head to see a frazzled security guard racing toward me. He stopped when he reached me, took a few seconds to catch his breath, and then spit out an alarming question. Have you seen anyone suspicious come through here? I shook my head. No, nobody comes down here. It's, it's the basement. What's going on? All hell is breaking loose in the hospital. With that, the security guard started rushing into every room in the corridor, searching for someone or something. I was frightened by his words and his tone. Something was wrong. I wasn't sure what to do, so I hurried back to the morgue. I was thinking of locking myself in there until someone let me know things were okay. When I stepped back into the morgue, I got the shock of my life. The corpse I had been sanitizing was gone. I was bewildered. Where was the body? I never even had a chance to wrap my head around that bizarre occurrence when the medical examiner, Dr. Dixon, barged into the room. He looked almost as stunned as I did. Where's the corpse? I told you not to touch it. I shrugged. I, I don't know. I stepped out of the room for a few minutes and when I came back, it was gone. My response wasn't acceptable to him. 
He started ranting and raving before he stormed out of the room in a panic. I was going to follow him, but then I heard a sound from the bathroom slash washing area. It sounded like something fell. I hurried to the room and flipped on the light. I couldn't believe what I was looking at. The Missing Corpse Security Guard I was alone in the security office, leaning back in my chair and listening to some tunes when the music was interrupted by an emergency broadcast. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to hear what the emergency was, because just at that moment, the security phone rang. I quickly answered it and was told to hurry to the third floor of the hospital. Apparently some maniac was attacking people, that's all they told me, so I bolted up to the third floor. When I got there, I only saw the aftermath. It was mass confusion. There was a mingling of patients, doctors, nurses, and others. Many seemed shocked. Some were crying. Others were tending to wounds. I recognized one of the people as Dr. Webster. He was a nice guy. He had a thing for flirting with much younger women. I hurried to him and asked him what happened. We were attacked. Attacked? By who? It was a little scrawny old man. I looked around at the chaos I was amongst. People of all shapes and sizes were wiping blood from various parts of their body. I found it odd that they couldn't have subdued an old man. I guess Dr. Webster could see my confused expression, so he elaborated. He was savage. He, he was a little old man, but he wasn't acting like it. He wasn't moving like it. He was like a deranged wild animal. I looked down and noticed Dr. Webster's hand was bleeding. I motioned to his wound. What happened? He bit me. I was surprised. He bit you? He was ferocious, I'm telling you. Whoever the old maniac was, he wasn't on the third floor anymore, so I rushed up the stairwell to the fourth floor. The crazy old man had been there too. It was the same hectic situation, medical staff tending to the wounded, people frazzled, unsure of what to do. My fellow security guards were searching all of the rooms. It was then that I got a call on my walkie-talkie that my supervisor wanted me to go down and check the basement. I was a little annoyed. The crazy guy was obviously around the area I was currently in. I wanted to be where the action was, not the dreary, boring basement but I did as I was ordered. I hustled down the stairwell to the basement and tore down the corridor toward the morgue. I stopped when I reached a morgue technician. I asked her if she noticed anyone suspicious down there, but, as expected, she didn't. So I started rifling through the various rooms of the dull basement in hopes of finding the old man. The rooms were void of people or activity of any kind. I concluded that the maniacal old man was not down there, and I took it upon myself to walk up the stairwell. If he was hiding there, I would find him. I was just a couple of flights up the stairs when I heard one of the stairwell doors open, followed by someone rushing up the stairs toward me. Before I could even turn around and see who it was, they rammed into me and shoved me against the wall. I banged my head and blacked out. The Missing Corpse Medical Examiner My name is Dan Dixon. I'm a medical examiner with a gambling problem. I make good money, but nowhere near the amount to pay off my gambling debts that were inching close to a million dollars. My bookie is named Tony Vignola, and he was really starting to come down on me about my outstanding debts. It wouldn't be long before they started breaking bones, so I was desperate. I had to do something. So I killed Tony Vignola. I used my professional knowledge to use a slow-working poison that is untraceable unless it's specifically looked for. And with me being the medical examiner, I'd make sure nobody looked for it. It was an extreme action, but necessary to cancel my debts. 
I was confident I could pull this off with no hitches, but I wanted to be extra careful. I didn't want anyone handling the body other than myself, including the morgue technician, so I called and told them hands off. When I arrived at the hospital, it was total chaos. Something major was happening, but I didn't have time to ascertain exactly what it was. I needed to get Mr. Vignola's body taken care of. When I got to the basement, I noticed the security guard rushing in and out of various rooms, searching for something or someone. But again, that wasn't my concern. I, I had to make sure Mr. Vignola's body was managed correctly. When I entered the morgue, my heart sank. There was no body on either medical table. The only body in the room was that of the morgue tech, Tina. She was clearly perplexed. Where's the corpse? I told you not to touch it. She shrugged. I don't know. I stepped out of the room for a few minutes, and when I came back, it was gone. Gone? That's all you can say is gone? Who took him? Again, she shrugged. Nobody. I mean, there hasn't been anybody else down here except for me. The corpse didn't just get up and walk away on its own. Obviously, somebody carted it out of here. What I want to know is who. I'm sorry, Dr. Dixon, but I don't know. I couldn't let anyone else handle Mr. Vignola's body. It was too risky. I took a few deep breaths in an attempt to calm myself, but it wasn't working. Still, I tried to get the morgue tech to retrace her steps. Who else was down here with you today? Nobody. I'm the only one scheduled today. I had no patience, so I started speaking to her like a child. Listen to me carefully. Did anyone else enter this room while you were here? She nodded. Dr. Webster, but he was really sick, so I walked him to the elevator. That was the only time I left this room. And the corpse was still in the room when you exited with Dr. Webster? Correct. Did you see or talk to anyone else at all after that? She started shaking her head and then paused. Well, just the security guard. The security guard? The one I noticed suspiciously searching the rooms when I arrived. It had to be him. He had to have taken the body. I rushed out of the morgue and darted down the corridor in search of the security guard, but I saw him nowhere. I stopped and listened carefully, hoping to hear his footsteps. What I heard instead was a moan. A satisfied moan. It was coming from the stairwell. I flung the stairwell door open and flew up the stairs before coming to a grinding halt. Oh my god. It was a gaunt, bald, elderly man stooped over the dead body of the security guard, and the old man was letting out moans of pleasure as he devoured the security guard's entrails. When I instinctively cried out, the old man twisted his head in my direction. The eyes of the man were not human. They were yellow and enraged. His skin was ghastly and death-like. He was gnashing his teeth and emitting short, defensive growls like a dog guarding a bone. I couldn't make out his teeth well, they were stained dark red. But I noticed shards of the security guard's flesh dangling from the gaps in his teeth. I was looking at a monster. I let out a scream when I saw the old man take an aggressive posture like a snake about to strike. He then charged down the stairs toward me. I dashed down the stairs and ran down the corridor toward the stairwell on the other side of the basement. As I reached it, I looked over my shoulder at the nauseating, scraggy old man racing toward me while shrieking out in rage. I threw the stairwell door open and then took two steps forward before I froze. Tony Vignola, the man I had murdered. He was ascending the stairwell. His naked, sagging body was a hideous pail of dishwater gray. When he heard the stairwell door open, his head jetted around and he fixed his evil yellow eyes upon me. He let out the scream of a banshee as he launched himself at me. I turned back to the corridor, but the skeletal old man was now just a few feet away, so I quickly ducked into the morgue and locked the door. 
The vicious old man started pounding away at the window of the door, smearing the glass with his blood-stained hands. He was joined by Mr. Vignola, and both of them glued their fierce eyes on me as I tried to figure out what to do. I was startled when I heard the voice. Hello? It was a female voice. It was Tina's voice. I hurried to the bathroom that connected to the morgue. The door was shut and locked from the inside, so I pounded on it. Tina, open the door! She did so. She looked drained as she lumbered out of the bathroom. Is he gone? Yes, he's, he's out there. I pointed, showing her the menacing monsters slapping away at the morgue door. I pulled a chair over and helped Tina sit down. What happened? I walked into the bathroom and standing there was the corpse. You said it didn't just get up and walk away on its own, but that's exactly what it did. That's when I noticed the blood on Tina's arm. What's that? He attacked me. I managed to shove him out of the bathroom and lock myself in, but he bit me. I looked at the wound. It had the appearance of being infected and was oozing a thick, clotting, yellow, green, and red discharge. Um, it, it's gonna be okay. I lied to her and she knew it. Then she started coughing and wheezing. She couldn't stop. Within seconds, she went into massive spasms and began vomiting dark red that was riddled with sticky white strands that resembled a spider web. Seconds later, she was still lifeless. But that didn't last long. She leapt to her feet with the swiftness of a cat and locked her deranged yellow eyes on me. Instinctively, I ran for the morgue door, but realized that wasn't an option. The savage old man and Mr. Vignola were there just begging for me to open it. As Tina let out a scream of rage and charged me, I realized I had no escape. <laughs>